Okay, this is a little look at rendering in Creo Parametric 2.0 and particularly aimed at the F1 in Schools program. So hoping that this is not aimed to be definitive, it's just aimed to give you a start on it and to help you get started. There's a lot that you can explore here to be able to make excellent renders. Okay, I'm just scrolling the middle mouse button at the moment um, and holding it down to be able to move the car around. This is what we're going to render. This is a development class car in the F1 in Schools model. So it's an assembly and doesn't matter what item it is, you can you can work on it. Okay, so the first thing to be aware of is that I've clicked open the render tab over here. So on the top menu, menu bar, the render tab. And the first thing you might want to look at is putting in some color. So if we want to color our object, then the, the place to go to is the appearance gallery over here. So clicking on that sub menu, you'll see a bunch of different appearances under headings. So my appearance is over here. Useful button at the top here, clear appearances. So if you want to get rid of all the appearances, just click that if you don't like what you're doing. So back onto the appearance gallery here. And we've got a bunch of colors. And more than colors, there's a whole, this is quite a complex area. It looks fairly simple. We can choose a color simply like this color over here by selecting it. I'm left clicking it. Notice this little box that appears up on the right hand corner. That's important. Paintbrush appears on my tool and now by highlighting parts, and it'll tend to just highlight a part, you can select that color, which is now this deep red color, and paintbrush it and select the area with the paintbrush. When you click OK, it will change to the color that you selected. And that part's fairly simple. So I wanted to make that a nice deep red. It looks good. And I decide that I'll have some other parts I want to color slightly differently. So I'm going to use this black color over here. Now in a minute we'll look at these headings underneath there, the description. It represents a, a, a advanced plastic gloss black color. So it's not just simply black, it's plastic gloss and we'll check those out in just a minute. But let's select it for the moment. It's now black over here. Again, I've got my little box here waiting for me to say OK. And I'm going to select the front airfoil and hold the control key down and select all of the other parts that I've yet to color, which are the wheels, as well as the front airfoil. Release the control key, click OK, and they've gone to that plastic, <laughs> plastic, that black plastic part that you can see there now. Okay, so so far so good. Now, a little point very useful to note, and you should know this, well you may not know this by now, the top, this little menu bar that appears down here is quite useful. And under some of the settings, this particular little square box, you get a choice of how you display your model without in the rendering window, just your normal window. So you can have shading with edges, so you can see all the edges appearing over there. You can have um, shading with reflections, which is pretty groovy, so straight away it's looking a bit interesting. You can see the reflection underneath it as I was sitting on something. And some other different kinds of settings. Um, just plain shading, which is what we had originally. Or you can have hidden lines, you know, which not as interesting for what we want to do at the moment, but you know, there are effects that you may be able to find them useful. So play with those, but for the moment we'll just look at shading the way we've done. Alright, so so far at this point, let's have a look at some of the things we spoke about before, that the different types of materials that you can select. So down the library down here, you can have a look at a bunch of different sorts of materials. In the library, you notice I've just down clicked on this drop down menu, and we've got a whole bunch of different standard metal, standard plastics, and then under the Photolux library, which is interesting because we're going to be using Photolux, that's the, the best format for these producing these images. You can have glass and there's different sorts of glasses, gemstone, frosted glass, and you can play to your heart's content here and to what you want to make your metals and you can have aluminium, brass, chrome, copper, so forth. Um, I've chosen to use, you can use paint as well by the way, a metallic paint, spray paint. Um, I've used plastics because it approximates the kind of finish I'd like to have. Now there's different sorts of plastics. I've used a gloss plastic. So you notice that my color up here, um, if I click on it, was, um, where is it here? Okay, hover over it, it says gloss plastic. So when I come to do my final rendering, I'm going to have a gloss plastic look. Just be aware of the different looks you can have, play around with them and see what you can come up with that you like. Or if you're looking for realism and you want it to look like brass because it's going to be a brass part, then you can choose the brass section for realism as well. Okay, you can click on more appearances over here, and we'll wait while this sort of loads up. 
And here, um, you can play around with the sorts of ideas that you want. There's a sample image at the top here, but you can choose to have metal, plastic, if I chose plastic. A subclass of plastic, you can choose generic or transparent, you can see through, translucent, not see through. You can choose the reflection color. So if you wanted to change the reflection color that was sitting underneath, you can click on this box over here and you can select colors for your reflection. Here it is. So you've got a color wheel. It's good to know this. RGB stands for red, green, blue. And you can you can select a different spot on the color. And as you select that spot, you can notice that the, the palette up here changes, the color editor changes. And you can have varying degrees of intensities of that color. So you can move this little bar down here and you can see that color editor is changing the color. So this will you can do this on all your colors. You can change the appearances, the backgrounds, you can make them go light or dark and move into the center of the wheel. It's almost white. So there's quite a lot of um, and you can change the intensities here. Now I guess you can play around on the color wheel or you can use the slider switches over here, whichever way it achieves the same purpose. So um, you know I'm going to choose a white I, I want a white color. So I'm happy to leave it at that point. So that's the appearance editor. Um, you can edit your different appearances. And the appearances basically mean the colors that you're placing onto your object. OK, be aware of that. And it's waiting for me to select an appearance. Um, I don't want to do that just yet, so I'm going to cancel out of that. OK, next thing to show you would be the perspective window. It's up here, the perspective tab. There's several different perspective settings that you can choose and they are fun to use and they really do add a lot to your image so I suggest that you use them um, you can change your eye distance and by moving the slider you can see you know how far away I'm looking at this thing from in perspective now you can choose the lens and your focal length of the lens uh, let's say put it up to about there and um, you can by center mouse cl clicking you can move your object around you can see now the rear part of the object if I move this is foreshortened. So you've got to definitely have a perspective view and perspective is quite impressive. Good to use it. Um, I thoroughly recommend it. You can play around with the settings and see how it works for you. And if you don't like them all just hit reset and it goes back to default. Okay. So there's your perspective setting. Uh, next thing to be aware of would be the scene selection. So on the left over here you can as it says, configure the model render settings and apply lights, room appearances. And this is complex, and you can get lost in this. It's like a jungle. Uh, and, um, well, I've got lost in it, I'll put it that way. You may not. But you've got a bunch of scenes, and that looks pretty straightforward. So down here on my your left, there's a whole bunch of scenes, and you can see them. You can bring your own scenes in, and they're called maps, but you need to have very high density of pixelation to make it work. So very very high resolution so you need at least sort of 15 maybe more meg of, of photo to make these things not look grainy when they're rendered so the existing ones are to that quality you can use them and I suggest you do if you've got a darker color try and use a lighter setting scene so rather than use some dark scene like this with dark black you're really going to lose a lot of imagery on it try and use a lighter color these are wonderful scenes, these courtyard scenes, and they're very impressive, but they do detract the tension away from your actual model. So if you want to look for special effects, they're great, but your actual model itself, um, probably best to keep a fairly plain scene in the background so that the attention is focused on your model. So I'm just going to choose this one, and by double-clicking on it, um, this is a Photolux skylight scene. It comes up here into the active scene mode, and I've got checked to save the scene with the model. So when I save at the end, the scene will be saved with this model. So straight away, you can see the model's now set in this kind of uh, shaded, fading kind of background. Um, now I'm ready to start playing with all the various different things that I can do here. So at the top in the scene, uh, we can go to room. Now the room, I may move this, this little setup here to a different location, but the room will enable you to be able to, I uh, don't want to import a room, the room's going to enable you to have a floor in this case, you can choose to have a wall if you want to as well. Now the floor button's checked, 
and you've got a slider here switch which you can toggle switch. Now as you see if I'm moving the toggle switch you can see the, the it seems like the floor is going down. Now to make you realize that it really is if I keep raising this toggle switch you'll start to see the, see the car disappear now as the floor goes over it. So you can choose how far, how far you want your car above that floor. Now at the moment this switch is locked on, lock room to model which means that essentially the model is going to be stuck in the same position. I can't move it I can move it the whole situation, but all I'm doing is changing my view on the room. The model is still stuck in the same spot relative to the room. If I want to change that and I uncheck that box over here, I can move my model relative to the room. So you see the model's moving now, but the room isn't. That's a useful thing to realize. So in many cases, you want to lock it so that you're happy with that situation. You want it, you just want to change the way you view it within that room. So. We're in perspective here. We've locked the room to the model. We've put the floor at this stage um, just below the wheels. So trying to make it look like it's sitting on the floor. You can put it wherever you like. Uh, we can have a wall. You can choose the wall around here. In this particular scene, there's a wall. And as we move it, we should be able to see this wall start to move in or move out in different spots. Not that obvious in this particular case. But um, we'll leave it sit there for the moment. So move a wall. Uh, this in some scenes there's extra walls and you can use those as well depending on the scene that you choose. You can choose by clicking up here the appearances. You can actually alter the appearances of the ceiling or the wall. You can change them to match into colors. So if you left click on that you'll get up a, a panel over here which will give you the chance to, to, to change the way that the whole scene appears. The, I beg your pardon, this will be the, I think it's the the room appearance editor and it's a ceiling color that we're mixing. So just like we played around with all the different colors on the car, we chose different settings, we can do the same thing with the room. Now you can also import your own backgrounds I think um, here as well. You can add them in. Um, one of these menu bars lets you do that and bring in your own extra appearances if you wanted to. So you can um, you can bring in your own photo and put that on the back with your face smiling on or something like that if you choose. You play around with all these switches, they do have a big impact and if your computer has got plenty of bandwidth and it plays nicely and it's got a great processor with lots of gig of um, in the graphics card then you're going to be able to see changes pretty quickly. Mine's fairly slow, it's getting on a bit like me so it takes a while for these changes to take effect but it gives you some kind of, and by the way don't be deceived it's not always doesn't always look like what you see in the window up here. You've got to play around and be able to see, get a feel for what changes you change, like reflection and, and so forth. Be careful of transparency. If you push transparency up too high, you lose the car or the item altogether. So I'd say leave your transparency unless you're trying to do glass or image your glassery glass. Don't bother with the transparency too much. So that's the room appearances editor. I don't want to make it too long, but you can play with those things and see how they travel. Okay. So let's leave that sit. Now we've had a look at scene. We've chosen a scene. We're going to choose, we've looked at the room which the scene is set in. Now the lights and the lights really are very important and the lights have a big bearing on what happens and you can see, um, let's see if I can move this thing around a little bit so we can get a better view. Um, you can see that there's a light symbol sitting over here and I can click on that with my left mouse button key and move the light from side to side and it will change the view and the appearance in which the light is showing. Now having said all that, I don't want the preview sitting around here. Just uh, let's see if I can move it out of the way, that's better. Yeah, all right. Having said all that, let's have a look at this default, this light. Now on the left hand side here, or the right hand side, you can add new lights. So you don't have to stuck with one light, you can have several others. So this is a default distant light that's sitting here. So I guess you can see that the way it looks at the moment has a default distant light. We can change the angle of that default distant light. You can also change the focal point of it. So I can drag that focal point down push it say I want some distant light shining on this front airfoil and I can change the angle of it as it shines. I should also be able to change the intensity. So the intensity button which applies to this default distant light down here. So I bump up the intensity in a little minute we should be able to see a little bit more um, light shining on our, on our object. Okay, It is distant 
so and it's designed to be able to the light disappears instead of covering up your object so you still get a chance to be able to see what it looks like so if I move that light away or move it around I can shine it in different spots and it's a distant light and I can choose to enable shadows now it's a great idea if you want to have shadows you want your object to look more have more depth choose shadows the hardness or the softness of the shadows is up to your taste you want them fuzzy or do you want them really clearly defined up to you I'm going to go somewhere half between um, now this thing lock light to camera yep okay leave that alone for a minute but this distant now let's say I sit it here actually I'm going to go this way a little bit around the back by choosing different angles you can move the light on different radii and you, this one I guess will bring you further in and further out so intensity and further away um, let's uh, let's now go and have a little look at one of these other lights this is an environment light so it somewhere sits in the background you can see it disappeared it's just this general kind of light that hovers over in the background I can bump up the intensity if I want or I can drop it down saturation is interesting um, the image you really have to play around with it to see how it affects it and I'm moving the switch now but I'm not seeing a lot of difference you don't really in my my particular computer you don't but when you render you'll notice a difference I keep the saturation fairly neutral um, rotation you can play with that to your own heart's content um, let's if we pushed a new spotlight on let's have a look and see what happens now okay so in here I've got a new spotlight and as I move this spotlight around I'm going to try and bring the car up a little bit closer so you can see what happens so you can see the light changing on the car as I shuffle the spotlight around from see there particularly you can notice it down here so you can really play you've, and as well as your backdrop light now you've got a second light to play with to really highlight the features of your car now because I've got this this front airfoil which is all black I want to try to highlight the I don't want it to be a black blob so I want it to really highlight a little bit more I want to see some of the features on on this front airfoil so I'm going to try and play around with it now so I can see more of the front airfoil yeah there it is now I want to bring it in make it a little bit more intense and I should be able to that's it squeeze it and make it highlight a bit more uh, uh, rather than being so broad uh, a glow from the light and see if I can get some more features on that front airfoil now, at the moment it's not working for me this spotlight so I'll broaden the glow a little bit if I want to get rid of it I can get rid of it but just to show what a secondary light can do see how it raises up those features near the um, the gas canister and you know you can play around with it but I'm eventually I want to really bring out some of the highlights inside this this black front airfoil I might leave that light there for the moment I don't mind that look and I might put in um, a skylight and see what happens with a skylight okay so here is it Here's the skylight here. There it is. Okay. So all right, that's gives me some. Okay, so that's giving me the light on my front airfoil a bit more. So you see that front airfoil starting to get a little bit more light on it. Um, so I play around with it. I'm going around the back. I want it to come around the front. Yeah, about there. Wonder about if I choose down this way. There it is. Okay, so I'm getting some good light now but it's a bit bright up the front here so I might go back to this environment light um, and uh, see all my lights are listed over here I've got my spotlight I might try and get rid of the spotlight and I just leave that that's better so I've got this this environment light floating on and it's given me a bit more definition on my my front airfoil and it's not too bright I don't want too much reflection on this bright surface at the top here okay so that looks looking okay my enabled shadows which is what I want and I'm gonna close that or well, before I do effects right at the end so I've looked at scene room lights and now effects okay background effects room effects you can choose them all environment effects you can choose to have studio settings, indoor settings, outdoor settings, or to define your own settings. Studio settings um, might be the go. We 
enabling a background so there's going to be a background we can choose a background so fit an image if we want and, um, and play around with it um, you know if we want to have a background image we can have a background image and we can import it and use it I don't at the moment and it'll give us various different potentials to enlarge or shrink that background image enable depth of field um, we can bring the object forward or behind the depth of field so focus so you can bring that depth of field in or out do we want it to sort of be right up we want to look at it through something or do we want to be sort of have it behind choose that okay close and we're not finished we're now about to move from the um, the appearance and the editing to the render setup window this is important the render setup window choose photo lux it gives you the photographic um, appearance which is what we want you can have a choice of photo render but photo render doesn't allow you with, to choose many of the scenes that we want to have photo lux does now quality is very important draft quality I'll try and show you in a minute I'll do it because it's fairly quick um, if we choose have low anti-aliasing and low shadows and we don't worry about final gathering and it's all fairly fairly kind of rough and quick it's like a low resolution setting I'll choose that for you and we'll do a render now we can choose to render just a region so if we had a very high quality thing we it's gonna take a long time what's it look like just pick a region and click your left click mouse button click and it will go ahead and do the render on that particular region that you've highlighted which is only a small box and here it is it's chucking away chewing 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 away now it's going to take us a while because I've got Adobe Captivate hooked up to this as well as um, as well as running Creo which is doing a lot of graphics work right at the moment so this is the draft setting we went to high it's a, it's a, a big jump we go to maximum I mean I might as well come back tomorrow morning at this rate so we won't be doing maximum um, but you can see now it's not particularly pleasant the way it's rendered here I'm not very happy with that um, if I chose to go and do a a full render now I'd be waiting a long time to realize I wasn't happy so using the render region is a really good option for you if you're wanting to check something before sitting around and setting up something much bigger um, render window would do the whole window for us which is not what I want to do so I'm going to abort this in a minute and it'll basically do the whole window produce the whole scene for you if you're going to do it and produce the whole scene and you've got to try and do this on a computer that's at least a, an i7 would be ideal i7 processor or a quad core i5 would, would be good and don't run a lot of other programs because it takes a lot of, of, um, of processor time and effort to do it it'll be very worthwhile you'll get an excellent image it does take a while to play around with the settings till you can get yourself something which is satisfying and useful now this will look really grainy and ugly and partly the reason for that is because it's on draft settings so the pixelation is low and the resolution is low and it's not going to look good so when you do your rendering you want to be choosing either high or maximum and I'll show you that in just a minute once this it's almost about to finish now there it is so you know it's not that attractive you can see the potentials there but it is it's not certainly not a quality image okay so with render setup what we would be looking at doing is choosing maximum or at least high now maximum takes me forever on my current computer when you're choosing maximum I suggest you do go to um, reflect re refraction depth we'll, we'll drop that down a little bit um, we don't want it too high um, choose your anti-aliasing to match the setting that you've chosen at the top which I've chosen high final gathering is good you can set it to 500 to 750 um, preview if you want a global illumination there's a lot of different settings over here which we're not concerned with the size of the image is sometimes relevant sometimes people print out and they find they've got a tiny little postage postage stamp size image instead of having a um, nice big picture you get a s several choices of sizes over here um, when you when you choose some of the settings um, it'll appear you should be able to to work out 
Choose a TIFF image to save it to. The TIFF seems to produce the best and most accurate results with, com with respect to your computer screen. So try and save it as a TIFF um, will be your best option. And choose the biggest resolution. I've got 1024 by 1024 for a squarish image. You can, there's other ones that you can select there as well. Okay, so if we set that up now and we do a, um, a render region because I don't want to be spending all night here. Um, that region over there. It will take quite a while, and I don't expect to, to wait this whole time. Um, so it'll go through three steps. So down the bottom of the screen here, you notice if you may have noticed on draft setting, it was steps one and two. Here, there's steps one of three. If you use maximum, it'll go through steps one to four, and each one of them can take a fair amount of time depending on um, on how long you've got, <laughs> how tough your processor is, and how active your processor is on your computer. So if it doesn't come out the way that you want, or if it comes out looking ugly or it's it's not you know really happy or anything like that, then you need to go back and adjust your settings. So you go into your scene mode, your appearance gallery, um, and look and look at your um, your settings, particularly the uh, your lighting settings. So your lighting settings have a big impact. Your room setting is your lighting settings. It's deceptive sometimes looking at the screen, you get a much clearer image than you do when you finally come to render. So what looks like a right amount of light on your screen tends to then be over exaggerated when you go through your rendering. So it's best to ease off on the light intensity and you can always build it up a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm not going to sort of spend too long here with this because it's a tutorial and you know you've, you've got a life to live and people to meet and children to raise and all that sort of stuff. So in a minute this will render and you'll get a little glimpse at high anyway and it does look heaps better than draft and maximum looks even better still I might even be able to show you some images that I've already rendered for you just to get a feel for what it looks like um, if this thing doesn't do its game pretty soon yeah I think I'll let it yeah I'd say it's going to be wanting to do more and more and more and more yeah okay let's abort that and I'll see if I can open up for you um, a previous drawing that I've done. Uh, here we go. Let's try this one. Okay, so oh, that's not it. Uh, find another one. Um, okay. Looks like they're not going to be showing up anytime soon. All right, uh, I might have to dig them from somewhere and show you a little later on. Let's look. There's some basic stuff there about rendering. Um, the cars will look fantastic when you get it all set up. They'll look beautiful. Looks like a po better than a, a photograph. So hope that helps you and um, improves your rendering. And it's just a starting point. Go for it. <laughs>